The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Grace on this, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Our opening hymn this morning will be 812. Come, let us join our cheerful songs. rise for the order of matins page 219 Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For our additional psalm, we'll use the intro. It was printed on the readings insert and sing it responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother like a weaned child is my soul within me the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. You may be seated for our office hymn this morning. That's 714, Who Trusts in God, a Strong Abode.
The Old Testament reading for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman, and she who is in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, the Ephraim is my firstborn. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And we sing the gradual verses on the insert. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Chapter 7. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he, who, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest holy, innocent, unsustained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We rise for a reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children forward. Yeah, it's on that side. 
Well, come on up. Well, I got a picture to show you. Let me get this for you. All right. We heard today Jesus had arrived in the city of Jericho. And Jericho was a really old city. It was a pretty big place, really. And a blind beggar called out for help. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He called out for help. He needed help from Jesus. And, of course, what he wanted is he wanted to be able to see because he had lost his sight. And Jesus stopped in the middle of all this commotion and said, bring him to me. Now, so you know what that shows you? When you call out to Jesus, he hears you. Even in that big crowd, Jesus heard that man calling out to him. And he brought him to him, and he gave him his sight back. Look at this. See that picture? Yeah. See how Jesus healed his eyes? And he gave him his sight back, and he said, your faith has made you well. Right? His faith was such that he knew Jesus could help him, and he called out and asked. And we do that too. We ask in our prayers, Jesus, help us. And in fact, there's a lot of different kinds of prayers we pray. We pray prayers of thanksgiving. We pray prayers of praise to God. We pray for other people. And sometimes we pray for ourselves. Sometimes we pray prayers asking for forgiveness for something we've done wrong. But this man's prayer was one where he asked for help. And Jesus gave it to him. You can pray at night too? Yeah, that's good. Mm hmm Yeah, okay. So we're going to pray each day, and we're going to ask God for help, and we're going to praise and give thanks. So let's pray. Dear Lord, bless these, your children. Keep them always under your care and protection. Bless their families. Help them always to call upon your name. Amen. Okay, and our acolytes got some candy for you. All right, yeah, candy. Okay, and our hymn of the day is going to be 846, Your Hand, O Lord, in Days of Old.
God's grace, his peace, and his mercy be unto you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Well, it's not only his prayer, it's yours. It's mine. That's the prayer of all the church through all time. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. The blind man had heard. He heard the stories. He heard the reports of what Jesus had done in various places. But now, Jesus was in his own town. Have mercy upon me. He knew of the others. But Jericho is an ancient city. One of the oldest in the ancient Middle East. And... Jesus and his disciples are on a journey which is going to have a harsh ending because it's going to end in Jerusalem and it's going to end on Golgotha upon the cross. There Jesus would offer his life as a ransom for the many, for you and I. The Passover lamb would be sacrificed. Already in chapter 8 of Mark's gospel, Jesus had made it clear to his disciples what this last journey to Jerusalem would entail. And he told them plainly. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. That Warning to the disciples is what precedes this journey which finds them passing through the city of Jericho. And there on this final trip, he encounters blind Bartimaeus. And it's recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So it's an important event. Notable enough that it's in all three of those Gospels. In a way, the healing of Bartimaeus shows a pattern that holds true for us today. A pattern of what happens or what has happened to those who follow Jesus. We who are born blind have received our sight, spiritual sight, faith in him, trust in the gospel, faith that saves all through him. He has called us through the word to follow him in the way. And we'll come back to that. You notice how after he recovers his sight, Bartimaeus followed him on the way. So do we. We follow on the way or in the way. It can be translated either way. So this event, this final journey to Jerusalem, that's towards the end of what we call his public ministry, which was about a three-year period. And now by this time, people have really heard of Jesus of Nazareth, so wherever he appears, crowds seem to form up, whether it's a town or a village or even a city like this. Everyone has heard the accounts of what he has done. Great miracles, astounding things, raising the dead, healing lepers who had no hope, giving sight to the blind. So this visit to Jericho, and though it's not in our reading, it's the same episode where Zacchaeus, because of the press of the crowd can't see Jesus, he climbs a tree, a sycamore tree, just to get a glimpse of Jesus of Nazareth. And much to his surprise, Jesus looks up and says, hey, Zacchaeus, come down. I'll have dinner at your house. Something he never would have even dared to ask because he felt so unworthy. And yet, Jesus, because he is the son of David who comes with mercy, he's seeking to save the lost. And he gets Zacchaeus down out of that tree and goes to eat with him at his house. So, in the press of that crowd, you have this blind man who's struggling to figure out what is going on, what, what's all the tumult about, and he would have had to ask. And someone told him, it's Jesus. The Nazarene is coming through town. And that's when he begins to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
but he was so noisy. And really, the, the tense of the verbs are, means it's a repeated action. It's not just once or twice that he calls this. He's shouting. He's calling out as loud as he can. And that's why many rebuked him. The people standing around say, this guy's irritated. He's shouting in my ear. Would you please be quiet? But he doesn't. He continues. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And this is what makes this such a beautiful event. So much so that it's recorded in the three Gospels. Not so much that it was a great miracle, which of course it is. But Jesus had healed other blind persons prior to this. It's important because Bartimaeus gives him the title, a messianic title, son of David, the one that they've been waiting for, the one who would be the Messiah for all, the one who would come as the son of David. And he calls him this not once, but twice. And Jesus here, in this case, receives the title son of David, the messianic title openly, unlike earlier in his ministry years, where he determines to keep that kind of quiet until he accomplishes his mission. He would tell those who realized he was the Messiah, but go and tell no one. Because he needed to do other things before they bring him down and try to make him king by force. Now he receives the title because he will go to be crowned with a crown of thorns to Jerusalem. Bartimaeus shouts, and he irritates the people around him, and they rebuke him. But it does not put him off. In our context, we are more and more in a culture, in a land that's becoming hostile to our confession of faith, to our trust in Jesus, so that when we call out our faith, people tell you, be quiet, be silent. Don't be shamed by a culture of unbelief, but be bold and continue to call out Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus says this, for those who live in a context of trouble as we increasingly do, if anyone, and this is chapter 8 of Mark, so it comes a couple chapters before this, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. You want to try and save your life by being real quiet so that you hope everybody likes you, nobody judges you for being a Christian? Go ahead. What does he say about it? You want to save your life by being quiet? You're going to lose it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. And for what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in glory with his Father and the holy angels. So, just like Bartimaeus was bold and continued to cry out, even though people around him wanted to silence him, so too we need to be bold enough to take up our cross and follow him. In the press, though, of that crowd on that day, those streets of Jericho were narrow. They're full of people. Everybody's trying to jostle in to see Jesus or to really to get an audience with him. Everybody's got somebody in their family or some friend they want to ask some favor or healing of. Jesus, in all that tumult, stops. Stops in his track because he hears this prayer from Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stops and says, call him. Lots of other people around. This one is singled out because he has recognized him as the Messiah. And Bartimaeus is not about to have this one chance of healing slip past him. Now those who had previously tried to silence him now help him to his feet. And they must have guided him to Jesus through what was probably a, a pretty thick crowd. They said to him, take heart, 
get up. He's calling you. Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. In all the excitement, he throws off his outer long robe so it doesn't get in his way. He's led to Jesus with the help of that crowd. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man says simply, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. Now, our translation has it as rabbi. It's rabboni. And I, I think it probably should have left it that way. It's sometimes a little bit more of a term of endearment for a rabbi. My teacher, my Lord, my master. And you've heard this used before as rabboni, haven't you? It's an Easter reading. Mary Magdalene in the garden. So when the risen Lord appears to her, she refers to him as Rabboni. And that's the word here used as well. Rabboni, let me recover my sight. Bartimaeus recognizes Jesus as son of David and his Lord. And now it's not just something remote from you in the past. Haven't you received the same gift of faith, of saving faith through Christ Jesus, the one who opens eyes, the one who makes the lame to walk, the one who raises the very dead? Hasn't this same Lord identified himself with you and said, you are mine? He has. Unless the world around you make you forget it, you come to hear the word of God and be reminded of who you are in Christ. So Jesus says to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. They're the very, you've heard this before too. You've heard Rabboni. Now you've heard this. They're the same words Jesus spoke previously to a woman who had come to him for healing back in chapter 5 of Mark. And let me just remind you of that because we heard this some months ago. Chapter 5 of Mark, Jesus on his ministry touring various villages, it says a great crowd followed him and they thronged about him, much like what he was experiencing in Jericho. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. So she's ostracized. It makes her ritually unclean, unable to go into the temple. She spent all she had, and she's only grown worse. But it goes on. She had heard the reports about Jesus. And what has she heard? He's healing anything he encounters. She had heard those reports. She came up behind him in the crowd, and she touched his garment. For she thought to herself, if I even touch his garment, I'll be made well. What does that tell you about her faith? Strong. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd. He said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, who touched me? You know, they're, they're being jostled through the crowd. But Jesus knew this was more than just someone bumping into him. This is one who came in faith seeking his healing. He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. The same words he used with blind Bartimaeus. Your faith has made you well. Your faith is given to you as a gift. It comes by hearing the message. Go in peace, he told her. Be healed of your disease. Just like Jesus saying to Bartimaeus, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Immediately, he recovered his sight and he followed him on the way. Remember, when we started, I said I wanted to come back to that because it's significant and it's so easy to miss this point. He recovered his sight and he 
followed him on the way. It's not just he's going to follow him out, you know, out of the town and things like that, though it is probably that as well. Bartimaeus has his sight restored. He's going to go on to follow Jesus and to glorify God with his life on the way, in the way. This is one of those, those words that can be translated in or on. Well, that might jump out at you a little bit if you think of the early church and you can see this in the book of Acts. What's the very first thing that the Christian faith is called? Even before it's called the Christian faith. The way. It's called the way. He followed him in the way. He became a disciple too. The healing of blind Bartimaeus reveals the way of life in Christ, the path of life. And we who are born spiritually blind and dead are called to him by his word. He restores our sight, giving us faith through hearing of the word. And in that faith, we follow him in the way, on the path of eternal life. All glory be to Jesus, the son of David, who has mercy on you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we rise to sing the Te Deum, page 223.
Kyrie, page 227. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We rejoice in your mercy, O Lord that you once extended as you passed through the city of Jericho to blind Bartimaeus. We rejoice that you have opened also our eyes, that you have granted to us faith in you, life and forgiveness in your name. Bless your church gathered here and throughout the world. Strengthen us and have mercy upon us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray with thanksgiving for the baptism of Lillian this morning, and also for the birth of a baby boy to the Garzones. O oh Lord, bless this child as we look forward to holy baptism for him as well. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our nation, that you would defend us from those who would bring destruction, that you would strengthen those and bless those who serve in our armed forces, that you would give them success that you would guide those who command to make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are serving in elected office to be given wisdom. Bring those to repentance who have strayed from you and strengthen our nation again. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our first responders, our police and fire departments, our sheriff's deputies, Guard them from the dangers they face in their service to our communities. Lord, in your mercy. And grant your healing hand, your comfort and peace to those in need. Remembering Donna, Jim and Bob, Christine and Alma, Stacy, Lisa and Sherry, Carol and Craig, Steve, Kathy and Michael, Gordon, Andy and Jesse, Connie and Pat, Glenn, Cindy and Diana. And here we add names which are known to each of us in need of your healing. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the Collect for Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May be seated for our closing hymn. That is 814. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Okay, a lot of things happening in the next uh, week or so. Today we have a, a youth event for high school and uh, middle school. And if you're still uh, are wanting to go with that, I think we can probably still get tickets for that. Just let me know. We'll try to get you added on. So we're going to meet about noon for Bible study and uh, grab a little lunch. And then we'll go out to the Chatfield Corn Maze. The path of finding your way through, which is a reminder sometimes that uh, life has a lot of choices and turns to it. Uh, Tuesday at 7.30, Men's Theology on Tap here at Grace. We're studying the small called articles of Martin Luther in 1537. Then on Wednesday, choir at 7 p.m. resumes our rehearsals for that. And um, Thursday, we resume confirmation class at 6.30. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Um, uh, Bo, there you are. Yeah, Bo updated our, our numbers for the Making Disciples for Life uh, effort. And you can see... They've been making a lot of great progress on the building. You might want to go linger and take a look at that as you start to see things taking shape. Uh, do you want to add anything to that, Bo? Anything? Uh, eventually, there will be a board out here. I apologize if it's not there yet, but eventually there will be. Okay. No, that's over. Lots of good things to look forward to. So uh, thanks be to God, to, to all of you who participated, prayed, and, and labored to make that extension of the building a reality because... Uh, the latest we're hearing will probably have occupancy of that in early February. Um, I know it's not as soon as we'd like, but that's about as soon as we could get this all to, to take place. So praise God uh, the, and uh, keep the workers in your prayers that they're safe and uh, able to get this closed in before the really cold weather comes. That's what their effort is. Uh, the roof is on, if you want to take a look at that. And, uh, and pretty soon they'll be closing up the walls too. So um, lots of opportunities. Not only can you make a uh, Christmas box for a child somewhere, but you can be part of the processing center. There are three clipboards on that table, uh, three different uh, types.
time slots that you can be a part of that. The, the one in November is especially uh, for our youth that are off school that day. And uh, the other two are evenings, Tuesday evenings in December. So um, one starts at 6 p.m., one starts at 7. They go till 10. Um, if you've never done it, you really should give it a try. It's, it's just a fun thing to be a part of. And I'll show you how to do it. There's, there's various jobs, and they've got it all uh, pretty well uh, organized out for you. So, the Lord bless you, and next Sunday is already Reformation celebration. So we look forward to that as well. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you.